Once again, good afternoon. Jeff Benson, Builders Risk Program Manager for Victor Insurance Managers. Uh, coming to you from beautiful Jacksonville, Florida. So really appreciate you taking the time out today to listen to some of our stories. Uh, I'd like to think they have uh, a lot of importance to you, the agents out there selling, selling insurance every day. Uh, what we're gonna do from a format standpoint is we're gonna run through a brief presentation, it should take 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll open it up to questions. So hopefully you have a lot of questions as we're rolling along, write it down and then send it in and Darcy who's managing this for us will uh, make sure the question get out, gets asked. So what we're gonna talk about today is managing construction risk in the current economic environment. Now our focus as always is on builder's risk and the in marine line of business, course of construction, but a lot of what we talk about today will apply to any construction risk, be it casualty lines or property. These are things that we probably all have read about and we, you know, we see them every day, but we're starting to experience certain claim activity, certain payment issues because of this environment. So I think you as agents, uh, hopefully we can pass along some of this information so you could talk to your clients your insureds and uh, make sure they're prepared because that's what this is all about is being prepared uh, in an environment like this. So let me try to make this as current uh, as possible. Uh, next. So these are the buzzwords of the day. Now, you guys, if you watch the news or you're or on your phones looking at the news apps, you hear all of these things. Supply chain disruption, worker shortages, inflation, these things have a direct impact on what we do as a managed general underwriter, underwriters on a builder's risk program, uh, what you do as retail agents, wholesale agents out there. Uh, this has a direct impact on everything. And what we're seeing in our class of business is we're seeing disruptions on these things that are making projects take a lot longer than they thought they were gonna take and cost a lot more than they thought they were gonna take. So for example, you have a custom builder building a million dollar house. Uh, a year ago, he was convinced he could build that million dollar house in 12 months. He would build and sell it and be done with it because historically that's what he's been doing. But now all of a sudden, the million dollar house he started a year ago is only 80% done or 70% done. And the homeowner that he's working with decides you know, to, to order something different and all of a sudden the million dollar house is now a $1.5 million house because of inflation and other things. And then on top of those two things, the subcontractors our residential general has always used uh, are nowhere to be found. They're too busy, they don't have time. So now he has to have a shortage in. You can see the ramifications of this. And I'm gonna give you a few examples as we get into this today. Uh, things that are real life examples that are happening to us every day. And hopefully uh, I can give you some ideas on how to mitigate that because that's what this is all really about. So what the, what are these trends, the supply chain, inflation, uh, shortage of labor? It's led to a, a pressure on financial performance. And I'm looking at this through the eyes of a contractor, uh, primarily a general contractor, and their margins are being being affected because a lot of times uh, time is money for a contractor. So the closing was scheduled, but because of shortages in the materials and labor, we have to delay the closing. I talked to a builder the other day and he was like, I gotta get this thing closed. I'm losing money every day that it sits there. So the financial performance is being affected. So we just have to understand that. Quality control, you're starting to see Unfortunately, if they're not using the right subcontractors, the quality of what they're doing is going down, number one. Uh, number two, we see an increase in theft. I'm not gonna say it's always the subcontractors, but maybe there's a little bit of a lack of control on the job site that leads to more theft. Uh, you know, maybe the materials are delivered to the job site and they used to be installed right away, but now they sit there for a while and something happens to the building materials, so we have theft claims. And what all of this is leading to is an increase in insurance premiums. We all know about the reinsurance, reinsurance situation and catastrophic events affecting pricing, but all these things that we're talking about today also affect pricing, costing more, taking longer, more theft claims. You get the idea. Next. 
we uh, this is not like uh, something that, that, that I'm sitting here theorizing about. We are seeing it every day. Every day, I personally look at extensions. Uh, and that's what we call it a builder's risk. So we wrote a 12 month policy, it's not done. Agent now sends an email, calls us up and says, I need another three months. I need another six months. I need another 12 months. So we as underwriters have to go in and look at the risk and kind of reevaluate things. Because maybe we wrote it 12 months ago for one value. And now the value has gone up, you know, or maybe we've had some claim activity. So we have to re-underwrite the risk. And uh, that's part of the issue that we go through. We're trying to be fair on these things. But at the same time, our exposures have gone up. So we have to reevaluate the risk. We're starting to see more and more, and it's happening every day, that people are building homes in these outlying areas. That all, that's great. You know, they have a lot of money. I'm going to build a big house on top of the mountain. But what that happens is uh, we have this thing called the ISO protection class, which I've gone into, done webinars on. But instead of being a protection class three in the suburbs, now this home is protection class nine, and it's on top of a mountain. So they don't have a water supply. They don't have a fire department. Uh, the response time is slow. So anyway, that affects uh, the pricing on the risk, the exposure, the way underwriters look at it. So it's just something we're seeing. We have to contemplate that. In the parts of the country, we have this thing called wild wildfires. So we have to look at the, the exposure to wildfires. Uh, we see projects using modular frame. They're experiencing losses. So they bring these things to the job site in one piece, put them together. Uh, unfortunately, though, when there is a claim, and some of this is not just modular, it's just frame in general, uh, fire is a big problem. You know, the whole thing is engulfed, and now we have a big loss. So frame projects in themselves uh, create an exposure. Uh, inaccurate insurance to value. These forms, for the most part, are written on a co-insurance form. And I'm not going to go into detail on co-insurance, but bid over should have times the loss. So if the million-dollar house, that's what the policy was written at, now it's a million five we have a claim, we could have a serious co-insurance problem. So it is critical to get the right value as soon as you become aware of it. So I would reach out to all my contractors that are right, that are building these things and say, do you have any adjustments to these, to your, to your homes that you're building? Because if you do, we got to get it right. So, and the other thing is we're starting to see a compression on frame capacity, which means more and more carriers are saying, yeah, this is a lot of work. This is a lot of headache, maybe, and we're having claims. Uh, maybe we don't want to write this stuff as much anymore. So you're having some uh, some capacity concerns on this, too. So these are all the things that uh, we are witnessing every day. Just to go back on the lost trends, too, because I, you know, I know I'm kind of like a broken record here, but it's so important to us as underwriters. Uh, we'd rather have a little loss control to prevent the claim before it ever happens. So theft, theft is a, the number one occurrence in builder's risk, uh, building materials being stolen from the job site, homes that are completed pending, closing, people come in and vandalize them and steal things. Uh, the longer the home sits there, the more it's exposed to these things. So how do we mitigate that? So number one is control of the job site. Little things, just uh, you know, at the end of every day have either the general contractor or the project manager or one of the subs, you know, walk through the job site. Just check things over. You know, is everything put up? If the if the, if, the, if it's enclosed or the door's locked, the window's locked. Uh, just the general cleanliness of the of the web of the, of the job site, just to walk through at the end of the day. And unfortunately, so many things happen on a weekend. So if I could pick a day to walk through the job site, it would be late Friday afternoon. Let's take a walk through. You know, we, we've had many instances where things happen over the weekend and it gets bigger than we thought it could be. Soft cost. This is uh, something we probably going to do another webinar on to walk you through this. But because of a covered cause of loss, you have a reoccurring expense, things you don't think about, engineering fees, architect fees, advertising fees. These things can be covered on the form. Just make sure you include it in the value. You know, so make sure that whichever form you're selling, uh, either they're covered or you can endorse it and it can be covered. Uh, water damage, this is something that uh, we're seeing a lot of in the commercial realm, multi-story building being built, this plumber makes a mistake, causes a leak, 
happens on a Friday, so the leak leaks all weekend, come back Monday morning, we got a mess on our hands. Water damage intrusion, number one. So once again, if they'd had a walkthrough at the end of the day, might not have been a problem. So that's simple as that. Fire, we've been having situations where people store, uh, we've had painters store rags in, in dumpsters inside of buildings. You know, just not, not a good practice. You know, so let's make sure, this is kind of like common sense, but my theory is if we use more and more unskilled labor, they're not really aware of this stuff. So it kind of falls back to the general contractor, custom builder. Uh, let's teach these guys. You know, let's don't put the rags in a dumpster, either next to the building or in the building. Kind of simple, good idea. General loss control. Current state of housing in the U.S., just to throw a few numbers out here. And this is October numbers. Uh, the November numbers will come out December 20th. So I'm not, I'm not clairvoyant. I can't give them to you, but it's probably going to be along these lines. Uh, I was going to give you some of the latest date uh, interest rate information out of the Fed, but uh, they're supposed to announce the new interest rate hike by the end of the day today. They haven't announced it yet. I think it's going to be a little smaller than it has been, but still an increase. Uh, interest rates are the number one economic metric that we follow for housing. So as interest rates go up, it affects housing. But having said that, we still have this other thing called supply and demand. And there's still a fair, fair demand in a lot of the country for housing and not a lot of inventory. You see the inventory has increased. Uh, this is a very geographic thing. So the Northeast is different than the West Coast, different than the Southeast. But just gives you an idea that, uh, you know, even though it's 855,000 detached single family homes being built, yes, it's less than the million two that were being built, but there's still a lot of activity out there. And like I said, the other thing is these things that are being built today are taking longer and costing more. So if you want to look at it from a revenue premium standpoint, there's an opportunity to write a lot of business, even as you as agents, because now the homes are costing more, taking longer. So the premiums go up, thus your commission goes up, kind of simple as, as it is. But uh, we'll continue to monitor that. We do, you know, as far as what happens over the next number of months, uh, I'm not clairvoyant. To give you my best guess, but I'll probably hold back on that one. But I think we're going to be okay. How's that? Maybe that's just the optimist to me. So the, a lot of times you'll hear me talk about what we call a pass-through risk for the typical home that's being built, and that typical home continues to change. So what that means is the typical home in the United States is costing more to build. Simple as that. So Existing single-family home price is 391,000 now. You know, a few years ago that was, you know, 220,000. So it continues to go up. And another way, if you looked at only new homes, detached single-family home, the average home to, to build a house now might be approaching a half a million dollars, depending on where you're located in the country. It could be higher. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of values being built out there, and they need to be insured properly. Like I said, the good news is get it insured properly, insurance to value, length of the project. All these things have a direct impact on the premium and thus your commissions. So this is a reason to understand this. But as you get out there and talk to the custom home builders, I think you'll find most of these things affecting them. So this is just a little, uh, a little more idea how you look at this. Uh, all of these things are impacting construction dramatically, directly impacting construction. It's not like an indirect impact or a little bit of an impact. When interest rates go up, it has a very big impact. When things take longer, big impact. Uh, we will say, see some of the smaller contractors go out of business. It's something you as agents need to stay on top of. You have a builder that goes out of business, and now there's a home sitting there exposed. It's being built. You better get right on that. See if you can find a market for it because it's, we don't want things uncovered. We don't want things. Uh, we want it. Our goal always as underwriters is to have the proper coverage and to mitigate the risk. So we, we want to have it properly covered. We don't like uncovered claims any more than you do. It's kind of our business to make sure it's insured properly. So just keep in mind, we, we don't mind the smaller builder out there. Just stay on top of them. Uh, and that's why it's really up to you to reach out to your insurers and say, you know, I know historically you built these things in eight months or 10 months. 
realistically, how long is it taking now? And make sure you have a, an honest conversation with them. And this is just a little tip, and I've been reading a lot in the National Association of Home Builders and different, different trade journals, but they're trying to get these builders to, to understand this going in, because the more they understand in the beginning, uh, the better off they're gonna be. So I still have builders sometimes they will tell me, ah, oh, yeah, I think I can do it in, you know, I can, I'm different than everybody else. I could do it in eight months. And then sure enough, about seven months in, we get an email and it says, yeah, you know, the, the windows were delayed. I had a builder that couldn't get his garage doors. It's hard to sell a home without a garage door. Uh, they just underestimated the supply chain or they underestimated that their, their subs were nowhere to be found. So have an honest conversation with them. Uh, inventory control. I cannot stress that enough. You have this building material that's delivered to a job site. If you have it delivered and it sits there for a week or two weeks, like some I've been told it does happen, it just, a lot of things can happen to it. As it sits there. That's all I'll say. You can use your imagination. But if it's delivered and you install it the day it's delivered or the day after it's delivered, that's probably a good practice. Or if you protect it, maybe it's in a fenced in area, it's lighted, it's got a camera. Maybe you will mitigate some of these theft claims that are occurring. I threw this in there because it might be time to start running background checks on subcontractors. I mean, maybe we need to, to weed out the bad apples out there. So I'm a general contractor. Maybe I always relied on word of mouth and that was enough. Maybe not now. So uh, you got to be very careful as a custom home builder. You're selling your product and you're saying, I build a great house. But if you start cutting corners because of the supply chain, now you're using different lumber or different windows or different whatever. Uh, over time, that will deteriorate the quality of your product. And we know what that'll do too. And once again, just the, this, as you store these materials, uh, don't still, you know, don't store flammable stuff inside an enclosed building. Uh, just don't do it. How's that? Simple as that. Try to avoid that. So now we talk just for a minute on coverage form. So not all coverages are the same. This is uncontrolled in the Marine. And there's a number of carriers out there that sell this coverage, but uh, you need to be dealing with an underwriter that really knows the form. And you need to spend a little bit of time thinking about it. You know, the real life examples of what's covered and not covered. And it really goes back to these things taking longer and seeing more and what am I gonna do? So have a thorough understanding of the form. Uh, I'm available, I'll give you my contact information. Sometimes I have agents calling me with hypothetical questions, by all means, give me a call anytime. As you, you get to know me, you know I like to talk, that's not a problem. And the other thing I get agents asking me all the time, but uh, you know, try to tell the underwriter that everything you know it's gonna be. So do your homework, understand what the builder's up to, then you can communicate that to the underwriter. If something's going to be delayed, as soon as you're aware of the delay, contact the underwriter, email, phone call, whatever you got to do. So I need to extend this thing right away. Don't wait till the last minute. Deductibles. I mean, we have different types of deductibles today. The AOP deductible, we have the wind deductible, we have a percentage deductible, a flat deductible. Make sure you understand these things. Um, and understanding as the homes sit there longer, they're exposed to more things. Right? I mean, now we have, maybe before we had the million dollar home and it was only a million dollars for the last month, but now it's delayed. So now we have the million dollars for three months sitting there. So you can do the, you can understand the logic on that, a lot more exposure. All right, before I get into that, I just want to very quickly say, that was kind of it in a nutshell, the things that we're seeing today trying to cover the most frequently asked questions that we're getting and the impact of the current economic environment. Hopefully that helps you out a little bit. And as always, I like to end these things on, people are always saying, Jeff, what do you want to write? You know, well, we like builder's risk, simple as that, course of construction coverage. But what we're really good at are these pass-through risks. And these are very basic. I just read through this quickly, but if you have a million and a half dollar structure, it's in the coastal area, but it's protection class one to seven, it's round up new, it's less than 30% complete. You got a builder that has two years experience. You can go to the website, enter the data, hit a button, get a quote, hit a button and get a policy. You can bill it if you want. These things take minutes to insure. 
and that's up to a million and a half coastal. And if it's in the inland areas, uh, it's up to three million. So we love writing that. You know, so keep keep us in mind for that pass through risk. So what we're going to do now is open this up for questions, whatever's on your mind, and I will turn it over to Darcy for a minute. Thanks, Jeff. So first question, what is the average time it is taking to build and sell a house? Yeah, you got to be a little bit careful when you talk about averages, but there is an average out there and it has gone up. So the average over the last number of years was running about mm, seven to eight months to build the, the typical house in the United States. It does vary by what part of the country you're in, but we're seeing that approach a year now. You know, 11, 12 months for the typical home. Uh, I've been seeing half million dollar homes being built, ground up new, and they're extending it beyond a year. So the averages are just going up, safe to say. So you definitely need to stay on top of it, talk to your builders. Uh, and if they're taking longer, make sure you get that extension in place. Good question. Right. Can you bundle multiple locations if they are under the same company name? Yeah, so if you have, I mean, we're pretty flexible with that. So if you have a builder building multiple homes, we can entertain a reporting form possibly or some type of blanket policy. Uh, or we could write multiple policies. It's not a problem writing multiple policies for a builder. Uh, if it's not too many locations, we could even schedule it on a single policy. Uh, we're still going to want the information on each location and you know the values where it's located so on and so forth but we'll work with you on that shouldn't be a problem okay will you ensure a commercial building that is say 50 percent completed first of all we our main guideline is value so in, in our program, we can insure up to $5 million in frame and up to $10 million in masonry non-combustible. So those are in protected areas. But we don't make it, whether it's residential or commercial, those values still apply. So I guess what I'm saying is it could be a $3 million home being built or a $3 million Starbucks being built, freestanding Starbucks in a parking lot. We can insure either one of those based on the value. Now, the question is percent complete. So if the project, when you bring it to us, ground up new, and it's less than 30% complete, it's gonna flow through the system that will not hold and be okay. If it's over 30%, it's gonna generate an underwriting hold or a flag, and one of our underwriters is gonna look at it, and just underwrite it and say, why is it over 30% complete and not insured? And then at some point, we might determine it's too far along and it's beyond the scope of our program. So that is kind of a, a roundabout answer it just depends on the on the location and what's happening. We do see it. Sometimes it's the owner thought the builder was getting the coverage, the builder thought the owner was getting the coverage, and neither one did. And now it's half done. I'm like, oh my goodness, we got to get coverage on this thing. We understand that happens. We just have to look at it from a builder's risk underwriting standpoint because our rates are predicated on going from zero amount of risk to 100%. So we get the money up front when there's not a lot of exposure to kind of cover us in the end. So when you bring it to us and it's too far along, we, we've lost that opportunity uh, to make the money on, on the pre on the loss side. So good question. Give us a call. All right. Is there a maximum extension that you offer? In our program, we say two years is the maximum length of time we're going to insure something. Now, uh, we, we, we will entertain things beyond that, but that's a case-by-case -case hold basis. So two years is kind of the drop dead. You know, we, we don't want to be on things longer than two years, simply because that's not the way builder's risk is, is, is designed. It's designed to build it and be done with it. So I won't say there's a maximum extension, but the maximum length we're going to be on something is two years. That's kind of a general rule of thumb. We have one that goes a little longer. We'll we'll talk to you about it, but because in today's world we might have some of that. But uh, so there's no set guideline on extensions. Now I will say, you know, it's a three hundred thousand dollar little home being built. And it's taken two years to build. We might have an issue. And it's like that one should be done, and we should be off of that one. 
So we, we underwrite those on a risk by risk basis. Good question. Is there any liability coverage on the builder's risk or is it property only? No, we are a monoline inland marine builder's risk only program. So we don't do any other casualty lines or any other lines. We will be introducing the contractor's equipment program early next year. So stay tuned on that one. But that's another in the marine line. So we are we are specialized specialists in, in the marine, basically. Good question. All right. So as far as contractor theft measures, what are your thoughts on the practice of hoisting ladders and other equipment into the air overnight using a forklift? First of all, I thought you were going to like ask me a workers' comp question. <laughs> and I was going to say, I'm not a workers' comp guy. But, you know, I do see that a lot. You know, I guess I really, you know, I see it more and when you're looking at a street and road contractor and they lift the generator up in the air. So, you know, I can think of a couple things, you know, offhand. I say, well, it's going to be harder to steal, but what if, what if something happens to the crane and it drops? That's not good either. So, I guess... I would have to probably gather some more loss control information before I tell you, yes, that's a good practice. I will say in home construction, though, it is better to take stuff, as long as it's not flammable, and store it inside an enclosed building. That's number one. So, you know, you just got to be, I got to be a little bit careful because we have had some combustion problems. But, you know, if you put something in a garage and lock it up, it's probably safe from theft. Just make sure it's not leaking oil and gas. How's that? So there's always never a perfect world. But, and I know we can always improve the security of a job site. So even if it's on the ground, but the job site's secure, either through fencing, lighting, cameras, uh, night watchmen. You know, there's a lot of ways to, to secure a job site. So maybe that's probably a better, a better tool than just simply lifting stuff in the air. I guess I kind of answered the question in a roundabout way, but good question. All right. Will you write a builder's risk policy for a seawall repair? Hmm, tricky question. So we don't do any waterborne property. Waterborne means we're not going to do a dock that's built out over the water. Now, if it's right next to the water, we would take a look at it. We would entertain it. So my mind says we probably, if they're only building seawalls, no. But let's say they're building a house that's on the lake, and they're going to part of building the house is putting this retaining wall in. As long as it's part of the overall building of the house, probably going to be okay because it's technically not waterborne. But I will say, build a nice house, and they're building this dock, dock that's sticking out. We don't do the dock because that is waterborne. Good question. All right, and it looks like we have reached our time limit for questions. So if we did not get to yours, Jeff or someone on his team will be reaching out to you. Thanks, Jeff. Well, Darcy, I appreciate you running the show today. And once again, appreciate all of your time. I know time is money. Here's some of our numbers. If you need us, I will draw attention to the 800 number, 800-944-7472. Pick up the phone. We have a team of people waiting to help you out. There's our main email address, buildersrisk.us at victorinsurance.com. So that's the best way to communicate to us. And we have the squared portal. So be sure and register, get signed on and see what we can, can offer you. So you guys have a great day and a good holiday. And uh, I'll be coming, at, coming to you next month or next year. How's that? Take care. <laughs>